Welcome to the Women in Fishing podcast. I'm Chris Woodward. The Women in Fishing podcast is sponsored by Axon Noble Yacht Coatings, makers of Interlux and all group products for boats. So whether we're anglers or not, we as females have lived with the specter of breast cancer all of our lives. Thankfully, many women, some of whom are survivors, have lifted the cause to promote a cure and to offer hope. My guest today, Susan Gates with Casting for Recovery and Carolyn Stash with Pink Ladies Breast Cancer Foundation have done just that. Susan has been with Casting for Recovery for almost 25 years. She began as a volunteer in 1999 and joined the national staff in 2010. Today, she serves as the group's executive director. Casting for Recovery provides healing fly fishing retreats for women with breast cancer at no cost. This year, CFR will host 51 retreats nationwide, serving more than 700 women. Susan lives in Austin, Texas. Carolyn Stash is a breast cancer survivor. She started the Pink Ladies Breast Cancer Foundation in South Florida after her own diagnosis and treatment in 2018. The foundation hosts the saltwater fishing tournament each October out of Pompano Beach, Florida, to raise awareness about the disease. Carolyn is also the founder of Atlas Tracks, a worldwide vessel and an asset satellite tracking company. Welcome to the podcast, Susan and Carolyn. Nice to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm actually sitting here in Cabo, Mexico. Oh, wow. Yeah. And hopefully the fishing's been good. Real good. I went up to a place called Mag Bay, which is about six hours north and fished with my fishing club and looking for a striped marlin. Unfortunately, uh, hooked one up. I didn't get it to the boat, but mahi beyond belief. Um, so I'm a little, little tired. Came down here to get the good signal for today's podcast. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks. I'm glad you could join us. And the, and you actually left the fish biting. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I want to... Um, get started with a little bit of background. Um, Susan, uh, can you tell us a little bit about how casting for recovery began and why fly fishing and breast cancer? So it actually began with two women who are friends. Um, one uh, was a breast reconstructive surgeon and the other was an avid fly fisher. And this concept came about uh, while they were fishing and the idea of getting women out of a clinical setting and into nature where they can relax, commune with each other, and learn something totally new and exciting, which is fly fishing. Um, also, the reconstructive surgeon commented that the casting motion of fly fishing was a lot like exercises that women are given after they've had surgery or radiation for soft tissue stretching. Um, some women following surgery or radiation have trouble say reaching a high cabinet or opening a sliding glass door, there can be a lot of restriction. And this is good for that um, for some women, but the real concept is to use nature as a healing model, fly fishing as a tool. And then from that is the opportunity for women to open up with each other, find new friendships, find support. And it all just kind of dovetails uh, together in, in a retreat format. And then uh, the uh, Casting for Recovery started as fly fishing in freshwater. Is that correct? That's correct. It started in Vermont okay. back in 1996. Wow. Yeah. Good. All right. Well, Carolyn, I know your your organization and your love is saltwater fishing. So give us the backstory, if you would, on Pink Ladies. Sure. I'd love to. First of all, I want to say I was actually in the lottery for Casting for Recovery. And um, I wasn't able to make it this year up in North Florida because my mom had taken ill. Um, and last year, of course, we had you know, the COVID the last couple of years. So I really want to be there next time. I've never fly fished and it's something I think would be pretty amazing. Uh, like you had mentioned, especially for dexterity of your fingers and hands. Um, I actually in 2018 um, was volunteering for a breast cancer tournament. And right after that in October, I actually found a lump in my breast and it was determined it was breast cancer. So I rushed right in and had surgery November 14th, 2018. So I'm almost five years, a uh, few more, few more weeks to go. And that's like a big marker. Um, and what I did was I put together a fishing team back then of breast cancer survivors uh, or those affected by breast cancer uh, or lost loved ones. And then just this year, 2023, we actually officially started our nonprofit, the Pink Ladies Breast Cancer Foundation in Florida. Um, so we we're officially a nonprofit. We just hosted our second Pink Ladies Fishing Cure Tournament. It's open to everybody. 
Uh, we raised over $15,000, which I think is pretty good for a second year tournament. And we're going to be giving most of it away. Um, none of our, my volunteers, including myself, get paid any anything for it. We do it for the love of fishing. The reason I did that is because the medications that they put us on usually affects your hands and your feet and your joints and things like that. So the only way I got relief was to actually pick up a fishing pole and, um, you know, try and fish. And there were times when I was catching large fish that I couldn't even hold the pole anymore or even turn the crank. And my team would come around me and actually put their hand on mine and turn the crank or hold up the fishing rod. And, you know, those are pretty, I get choked up a little bit because you remember that moment, even though it was a year or two ago, so vividly. Um, and I wanted to share that and get other girls out on the water that are doing the recovery as well. So same same concept, uh, fresh air, salt air, um, getting out there, getting exercise without realizing you're getting exercise because you're having such a good time. So I think that was a really big part of it. And uh, we've been asked to do the third Pink Ladies Tournament next year, which we'll do. Great. Yeah, the camaraderie and the, the, the ability, whether or not you are a breast cancer survivor, just to fish with other women is still somewhat unique, um, you know, because we really just haven't been fully involved and, and able to network like this before. Um, Susan, tell us about some of the retreats um, that uh, Casting for Recovery has held. Where, where are they? How many women? What yeah. do they do when they're there? So we host over 50 retreats a year all across the country. They're usually held um, based on river access, water access, and the venue. Um, there's always 14 women at each retreat, so they're purposely small. And the retreats are a combination of learning casting, how to safely land a fish, release a fish, um, a little about conservation and entomology. And then we bring in oncology professionals at every retreat um, to talk about the medical side of breast cancer, the physical effects, as well as the emotional effects. And then there's time just for women to bond, make friends, uh, talk about their experiences in a safe space, talk about things that they might not feel comfortable talking to their family, spouse, partner, um, kids, parents about, here's a safe space where they can say just about anything and it's okay. And that's a huge relief, I think, for women who may not have an outlet um, or haven't ever shared their cancer experience with anyone. And I'm always surprised at how many women say, I've never really talked to anybody about my cancer experience wow. and um, really normalizes it to be able for someone else to say, oh, I feel exactly the same way. And you're like, okay, that's normal then. Yeah. Um, at least for yeah. us, um, yeah. that's normal. So um, yeah, it's a weekend uh, all focused on wellness. It's really about whatever each woman wants to get out of the retreat. We provide the opportunity, what they take away from it, whether it's the friendship, the fishing, the support, the resources, whatever it is, everybody needs something different. Um, it's, it's there for them. Well, what are some examples of some of the places that y'all have done on trips this year? Can you give me a couple examples? Yeah. Carolyn mentioned a North Florida one. What, what was that about? The North Florida one was um, in uh, Live Oak in Northern Florida. It is challenging in Florida. Um, sometimes with freshwater and alligators. And um, uh, it's one of our few retreat programs where we have to uh, check our liability insurance around alligators. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a little un uh, unusual. And in that case, we were we were fishing um, some, some ponds there, but we like our retreats in uh, Montana, we might be fishing the Madison or over... Um, on the Blackfoot here in Texas, we're not, we're fishing for bass and we'll be fishing uh, an area of the Guadalupe or up on the Paluxy River near Dallas, Fort Worth. Of course, here we're challenged a little more by drought and water levels and all of that. Um, so it really runs the gamut, but we have a replicable model. So if you were to meet somebody from Alaska or um, Nebraska, what they experienced was the same, just uh, possibly different types of water that they're fishing and different funny accents, depending on what you can see that from where you're from. But um, yeah. Okay. Um, Carolyn, what about the tournaments? You've had two of them so far. 
Um, where do they take place? What species do you fish for? So um, out of, we're in the east coast of Florida, so the Pompano Beach, Fort Lauderdale area. Um, we made it this year out of any inlet um, to get more people fishing. We don't have lines in time. We just have to feed the scales by five o'clock. Typically it's meat fish, so kingfish, wahoo, dolphin, easy fish to, to catch. I think this year we're gonna add some other things like snapper because um, in, some people get seasick. So for closer inshore, maybe a novice angler can catch something and still come to the scales and feel like they've won something. And actually it was very interesting. We opened it up to men this year too, because we had one gentleman who donated his boat and was a bre is and was a breast cancer survivor. His mother yeah. had breast cancer and he did too. So he actually put a few survivors on his boat. We had another company called the EMC Aerospace. Not only did they donate $7,000 to be our title sponsor, they donated a 53 foot um, hydrosport boat and filled it up with survivors as well, which is amazing. Wow. Um, and that was at no cost to us at all. Uh, so we really appreciate the community in Pompano Beach is pretty amazing. Um, we have a, a boat builder called Reef Runner. They built us a beautiful little pink um, boat that we are going to be starting to raffle off a little nine foot with a trailer, six horsepower motor that's going to have the breast cancer ribbon on it. So we're super excited about that. Uh, hopefully a young lady will take that home and uh, we're going to do it again this year. The local community donated the, um, the dock space, the hotel for our weigh in called the Sands Resort Marina. Um, Galuppies was the restaurant that let us have our captain's party totally free of charge. So the community is really um, um, behind us on that and we're fundraising year round we have these amazing shirts that were designed by a gentleman called dennis friel he paints all the bridges with beautiful artwork and he did these shirts for us on the back i'd, I'd love to show you the back at some point but those are available on pink ladies um breastcancerfoundation.org or even donations and and all of it goes back to the community we've had a Go young ahead. lady who didn't want Not to tell her her family she had breast cancer so she went through it herself oh. and we made sure that we got dog care for her and food to her house so you know, like you, like you mentioned, Susan, a lot of people don't talk about it. Yeah, for so many reasons. Go ahead and show us the back of your shirt. Let's see what it looks like. They're absolutely beautiful. Oh, wow. Look at that big old dolphin His name on there. is Dennis Creel, and he does a lot of charity work uh, locally in the community. Um, so he's just an amazing, amazing gentleman. He did that. He whipped it up in a weekend for us. That is, so. that's all. And awesome. it's our fishing for a curament. A curament. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. Um, all right. Well, Susan, how do you, how do women get involved in a, either as participants or as volunteers in CFR? Sure. For women who are interested in applying for a retreat, our retreats are open to women, any age, any stage of uh, breast cancer treatment or recovery. So we have some women who are in active treatment. We have other women who may be up to 20 years out. Um, women in their early 20s. We've even had a woman in her early 90s come one time. Um, so uh, the retreats are free. Uh, women apply to the retreat that's closest to them via our website, which is castingforrecovery.org. And um, it's a lottery. So we select the women randomly to attend and then everything is covered except for transportation to get to the retreat site. And even that we would help with if there was a problem in that way. Volunteering is uh, really just as easy um, to apply. It's going to castingforrecovery.org, ways to help. And then there's an online volunteer application for um, uh, men and women. So for the actual retreat, we have an all female staff of oncology professionals, hospitality retreat leaders, fly fishing instructors, and then on the final day of each retreat is our fishing day. And each one of our participants is matched up with a fishing guide. Uh, so um, someone from the community, male or female, that is an avid fly fisher, not necessarily a professional guide. Someone who's a patient teacher, someone that wants to give back and um, they come out and fish one-on-one. -on -one. So men and women, um, yeah. We have volunteer opportunities around the country for for uh, anyone who's interested. So if I was wanting to volunteer, I could potentially volunteer as an angler or teacher at a retreat in my region, that type of thing? Or do you yeah. have national volunteers or? We mostly keep folks within their own community just for ongoing networking and community and resources. Cause sometimes women wanna go fishing again after their retreat. 
And it's really great to be able to hook them up with their local TU chapter or a local fly fishing club so they can start building community um, around fishing. And yeah. so that's the case. Now, I know that a lot of people sometimes live in Maine and they winter in Florida or something like that. In those cases, if the retreat is happening when they're in either of those states where they might might live, then they could volunteer in both areas. I yeah. see. Do you ever have participants come back and volunteer? Absolutely, all the yeah. time. In fact, many of our, we have 42 programs around the country and we always have a program coordinator who oversees everything for that program. And many of them are past participants that come back. And even if they don't have, even if they're not an angler or an oncology professional, we always like to bring alums back to volunteer at our retreats, um, often in hospitality or as a alumni liaison, as an ambassador of sorts, um, which is really fun as well. So, yeah. Cool. Um, Carolyn, a uh, kind of same question if I'm, if I, you know, have been diagnosed with breast cancer or if I am, um, just a local person in South Florida who wants to participate in this cause, what are the different avenues for me? A great question. So we will help financially anybody across the country if they need a little bit of financial assistance. We're actually sending out a check to someone in Texas um, next week. As far as local volunteers, since we fundraise year round, um, we're probably gonna be doing some ice skating parties, things you don't expect in South Florida. They can reach out to me on my phone number if they need financial assistance or they wanna nominate a warrior, we'll send out one care package minimum per month with blankets and ice packs and things like that, that I found really helpful when I was going through my treatments. Um, I still continue to have to do IV treatments. I'm a survivor, but now I have bone osteoporosis issues. So I know that when I go into the chemo lab, blankets and things like that, ice, igloos, yetis. Um, so uh, if somebody is locally in that South Florida area, we would love them to help volunteer for some of these events. Somebody is in financial need or wants to nominate a lawyer, they can on our website, which is the Pink Ladies Breast Cancer Foundation.org. Um, and if somebody even wants a to, to us to talk to them before surgeries. We've counseled girls through what to expect, how they're not fearful. You know, what does day four feel like after surgeries? Um, don't worry that, you know, drains are gonna just fall out of your chest, how to sleep more comfortably, things that I went through and that we've gone through so that people aren't so, girls aren't so afraid to go through it um, on the day of surgeries and even after aftercare. Yeah, they would reach out to you at pinkladiesfoundation.org. Pinkladiesbreastcancerfoundation.org. Um, there's a contact us page. People can make tax deductible donations. They can buy our sun UV gear. They can nominate a warrior, someone in need. Um, and then we review all the um, applicants and then we can decide how to best um, distribute the, the funds throughout the, the nation. Because we want to we want to grow this. We're small and grassroots right now. We help a lot of other charities. We work with cystic fibrosis and they've got a paddleboard event that goes from the Bahamas all the way back to the United States. We're 200 paddlers. Um, with my Atlas tracks, we put our trackers on their boat so they know safely where all these uh, boat, these uh, paddlers are 80 miles. They start at midnight for 16 hours for raise money for cystic fibrosis. So um, we all work so much in the community, which is pretty amazing. Um, yeah. And Susan, I'd love to come next year. I'm sorry I didn't make it this year. What you do is amazing. I wa love watching the videos on YouTube about some of these women that are fishing and picking up a fishing rod for the first time with waders on. It's pretty fun stuff to watch. <laughs> That's cool. Um, Susan, what do you see right now as the greatest need in, in the fight against bre breast cancer? I mean, you deal with a lot of oncologists. What are, what are they saying we need? What do we need to, to defeat this? To defeat it? Well, we need a cure. But in the meantime, we have so many women who uh, are surviving breast cancer with earlier detection, better treatments. Uh, the, the population of of survivors is growing. I think also that there's uh, there are a lot of underserved populations out there that need support. So whether it's folks at higher risk, whether it's um, uh, women of color, uh, the metastatic breast cancer population, um, we just need more support out there for that growing population of survivors and for the thrivers out there with metastatic breast cancer. So I think that um, while we wait and hope for a cure, 
we need to help folks live their best lives right now in whatever way with that is. And that would basically mean that more organizations like y'all's organizations to reach out to these people to maybe yeah. specialize in some of those things that you talked about uh, in, in helping those populations. Uh, Carolyn, what do you think? I think it's really important for early detection. I, I talked to so many women that were too afraid to go to the doctors and early detection is key in the treatments and the treatments are much more mild um, with early detection. And in my case, I probably waited a little bit too long to go in and looking back, I should have gone in a little bit sooner. Um, maybe the medications wouldn't be as aggressive as they had to be. So, you know, I just want to encourage women, don't be afraid to go. It's, yeah. it's for everyone's well-being. Do those yearly appointments. Um, if they say, you know, put it on a watch for six months, do that. Make sure that you're getting out and getting those medical cares. And most, most mammograms and things like that are now covered free of charge. So I think that's really important. And, and then for those that are survivors and thrivers, like you said, Susan, get out, get the fresh air, do sporting events that you don't realize that you're actually doing sporting events, pick up a fishing rod, pick up a, pick up a firearm, you know, go out and uh, hit a golf club, anything that requires use of your hands and your feet and joints and things like that for um, assisting future osteoporosis issues and things like that, that all, you know, come up, come into play with some of these medical treatments that we're taking. Yeah. Okay. Um, Susan, what about the future? What, what do you think uh, casting for recovery? Where do you think they'll be in five, 10 years? Where well, do you hope right they'll now, be? Right now we, there are eight States where we don't have programs. Um, I would like to have a program in those eight States so that right now, if a woman lives in say North Dakota, um, she can apply to the retreat closest to her. So she would hop over to Montana, most likely, um, to apply for a retreat. I would like to have retreats in, in those states, those eight states. And I would like for there to be a larger number of women that fall into those underserved categories to be at our retreats. So more women of color who are often diagnosed at a later stage. The mortality rate is much higher for women of color. Um, and they need more as well. And I would like for us to have more retreats for women in the metastatic community. Uh, their needs are very different. Their needs and concerns are than the larger non-metastatic breast cancer population. So I want all of that and I want more. And, and I love for there to be something that makes a woman excited, whether it's getting out on a boat and saltwater fishing, whether it's just being out in nature, whatever it is, it used to be that a support group was sort of that stereotypical movie support group in a fluorescent room back in the hospital in a circle, tense. And now the outlets are, I don't even want to say they're out of the box. They're they are becoming the norm now to find the support that you want. Um, and the people that are like-minded that want to do the things you want to do to find that uh, community that can help you. So... Um, I want to do all the things, um, and hopefully we will achieve some of them. Yeah. How about you, Carolyn? What, what's the future for uh, Pink Ladies? We've got some exciting news. So we've already scheduled for next year's third Pink Ladies Fishing Tournament, October 3rd and 5. Susan, if you want to come down and fish, you've got an open invitation. So we've got that. Uh, we have a potential Pursuit Channel is talking to us about maybe doing a little bit of a Pink Ladies Outdoors show that might come out maybe in January, February. So hopefully we can spread our word a little bit more. Uh, get our competitive ladies team out there and uh, make some of the other girls and guys laugh. We fish pretty well. Um, so that's where I continue fundraising throughout the year and, and get that money out into the community where it's needed. That's great. Well, um, do either of you have any other topics that you'd like to talk about? Susan, I would love to see if there's a way to partner with Casting for Recovery. Maybe we can get some of the girls out and do a little saltwater fishing. Um, get some boats <laughs> together down in the Pompano Beach area and do something a little bit different. That might get a little bit, uh, the club spread a little bit more. I think that crossover be... is a great idea. Get the, get yeah. the fly, fly girls offshore and get the offshore girls up in the rivers. I think a lot of these girls be... are fly fishing off at saltwater sport fishing. So catching marlin, catching dolphin, mahi, things like that. So we can get some fly rods out there. Yeah. I haven't ever gotten anything bigger than a redfish. So I I'd be screaming the loudest, I'm sure. Uh, but I would love, uh, I would love to talk more. I mean, we're all trying to do the same thing, which is improve women's lives following breast cancer. So 
The more the merrier, in my opinion. It's a win-win. All right. Well, we'll look forward to all the exciting things y'all might uh, do separately and together. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me. And um, maybe we'll see you on the water sometime.